again, it's Kennard Burning Stewart here for the podcast. We're talking a little bit about Auburn football on a really, really warm Sunday afternoon. Go ahead and like the video, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. I am your host, Kennard Burning Stewart, and as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger or Eagle. Okay, so there was a comment that came across the other day. I can't remember exactly what video it was on, but it was from um, a a commenter named the lizard king that's actually what he goes by on google okay and he talks about auburn as far as their limitations as far as having a shot to uh, at a national championship and the post went a little something like this it says the only reason anybody talks about auburn ever having half a shot anymore is because of 2013 well think about it Take out the flukes, that'll never happen again, from that 2013 season, and 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, uh, he left out 2017, because there was actually some uh, crazy stuff going on there, not flukish, but unlikely scenarios, Uh, 2017, 2018, 2019, are all pretty much identical seasons from a win-loss standpoint okay i want to take this comment a little bit further because the lizard king is really really kind of right um when you look at all of those seasons you talk about uh eight and five in 2014 seven and six in 2015 uh eight and five in 2016 of course going ten and two in uh well ten and three in 2017 eight and five again in 2018 and then nine and four in 2019 so when you look at the results just raw results look at the facts the lizard king is absolutely right now as i counter this this is not to discount what the lizard king is saying but i want us to look a little bit deeper into this than just the wins and losses because i still feel that auburn is worthy of being in the conversation as they are at certain points of most seasons of having a chance as being contenders. They didn't do this just because of the fluke, the pick, the, the kick six and the prayer at Jordan Hare. They're contenders year in and year out because at certain points in the season, they show themselves as, as, te- as a team that has a possibility to go all the way. Now let's look at 20, say 16, for example. Quarterback gets hurt, running back gets hurt, depth issues, recruiting is caught up with you. So, yes, you're going to lose. You shouldn't, still shouldn't have lost to Georgia, but you're going to lose to Alabama. And, yes, you're going to lose to Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl. Probably shouldn't have been there anyway. 2017, kind of sort of the same thing. Having a very nice run, but depth at the running back position. Told on Auburn again. Carry on Johnson basically goes down in the Alabama game. Auburn has no answers going into the SEC championship. Also counter that with a couple of turnovers, including one by Jared Stidham in the red zone when Auburn could have taken control of the game early, but a couple of turnovers turned them away there. Then you look at 2018. Now this was probably one of the more disappointing seasons, I think, in the Gus Malzahn era. Clearly losing the game to LSU inexplicably. Also, when you look at the decline defensively, no one really likes to talk about this, but this really did happen. During the stretch between Tennessee and, and, and Alabama, Auburn surrendered almost 450-something yards a game, almost 30 points per game, and they lost a lot of games during this time period. As a matter of fact, had it not been for a, a win over Ole Miss and a win over Tennessee, we might have been talking about buyout situation with Gus Malzahn. That's really how, how bad it got. But interception by Noah Igbenogany, unlikely comeback against Texas A&M. All of a sudden, Auburn goes into the Georgia game ranked number 20 and salvaging the season. Really, if, it was, if, it, if Auburn would have had a little bit more offensive production, I think Auburn has a chance against Georgia. Probably, should, probably in a roundabout way, not saying should have beat him, but would have had a better chance. So... Here's the deal. 
when you talk about wins and losses, yes, that is the raw result. But I just don't think that all seasons, no matter what the outcome, are created equal. Let's just talk about, say, we'll just use 2019, for example. I just don't think it's a fair statement to put 2019 in the 8-5 and five debacle seasons. Because, for one, you were in pretty much every game you played. You have a freshman quarterback. You have a, a deeply anemic offensive line. But you end the season 9-3 and three. with the win over the University of Alabama, freshman quarterback playing, defense playing at a much more higher level. Then you have two guys that get drafted in the first round. So that's expanding the, resor- the results portion. You didn't really have that years prior other than 20, uh, either 13 or 14. You didn't have that prior. So you got to look at the totality of the success. Why do people think Auburn can be a contender? Hell, they're just recruiting better. All of the games last year, Oregon, who won the Pac-12 championship, uh, Alabama, who was a great football team, Georgia, great football team, all in those games with viable opportunities to win, actually beat Oregon and beat Alabama. LSU wins the national championship, only losing that game by three points. So I tell you, this 9-4 and four season cannot be placed in the same category as the 8-5 and five seasons prior because the results are different. In the 9-4 and four season, you have two first-round draft picks in Noah Igbenogany and Derrick Brown. I mean, that's just, you know, unfathomable. Number two, you have a situation where obviously like I said before you're in each one of the games I mean that they're they're it was toss-ups either way and plus in the SEC is not but so many wins to go around three the beautiful part about this is Auburn is just recruiting better better much more depth much more opportunities to be successful down the road that's why they're going to be contenders and that's why they're going to be considered In the conversation, when you talk about national championships, when you talk about college football playoff opportunity, opportunistic type teams, of course, only four can make it. But Auburn is going to be in the conversation as long as they continue to recruit well, as long as they continue to put guys in the NFL where they don't have to, uh, you know, sell their souls to make it via free agency and all that other stuff. Then Auburn has a chance, just like any other team has a chance. Some teams have better chances than others. LSU, they recruit well, so they have a chance every year. Alabama has is that overlapping talent that's unreal. There's some guys, five star guys on that football team that you have never. The only time you heard from them is when they were actually being recruited. They go to Alabama and go to, into a complete purgatory where Alabama just basically hides five star recruits so nobody else will get them. It's basically what's happening. Same way with Georgia. Georgia is going to be a contender in some form or fashion, every year. Auburn will be, too, as long as they continue to recruit in an educated fashion like they have. Like the video, comment, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Kennard Vernon Stewart. I am your host for Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. Go ahead and, like I said, like it, comment, subscribe. I might have already said that, repeating myself. And as always, great to be an Auburn Tiger, War Eagle. (laughs) 